Hey everybody and welcome back to WCCF Tech TV. This is Keith again and today we're going to talk about the RX 480 and how to make this GPU a bit more efficient. So it all kind of started whenever the review started rolling out and we saw that the RX 480 wasn't exactly the best overclocker. In fact it barely overclocked at all only by a small margin and we weren't seeing very much results from that except for a massive increase in power draw. So even though I bought these extra coolers and I have this extra stuff that I planned on doing with the RX 480s to, to deal with overclocking, I decided that since the results really aren't beneficial enough, we would look at other avenues. And that's where I came across a few, I actually saw some other people doing it and thought this would be a good opportunity to show some people how to do it. Now what we're talking about here is undervolting the card, which used to require a third party application such as um, MSI's Afterburner or ASUS GPU tweak, something that would allow you to adjust the voltages as well as the power limit of the card. But thankfully AMD's included those particular features in their new Wattman uh, application within the Radeon settings. Now, one of the things they did was here was they they gave you P states. They give you the power states of the card. So the top end is where a lot of the extra power draws coming from. So what we did within Wattman was take those top two power states and change it the voltage control to auto and then we dropped the top two down just a little bit, not a whole lot. We took it down from 11, uh, 1060 down to uh, 1000 uh, millivolts. So we just dropped it just a little bit on the top end and what we wanted to see was, was that enough without changing anything else in the system? Was that enough to actually reduce the temperatures and the power target and reduce improve the performance of the card while reducing power? Well, looking at our stock uh, core clocks and everything with a GPU-Z, we see uh, we hit 1266 consistent, 1750 on the memory, we hit 81C on the core with a fan speed of 50% and the GPU core power draw was 124.2 and we know this is supposed to be 110 watt uh, TDP or 110 watt GPU core so that is obviously going a little bit higher but our voltage is running at 1.0375 volts so at, that's with stock so we reduced it and we managed to keep our core clock at 1266 across the board, uh, 1750 megahertz. We still hit a GPU temperature of 80C, but now remember the temperature is based on a temperature target, not just an arbitrary, it just gets this hot number. But if you notice, our fan speed is now reduced to 44%. So it's down 6% from the 50% to 44%, so reducing noise. And we also lost a degree on there on the core. So if we were to run at 50%, it would drop the temperature even more. I'm imagining down into the mid-70s. So you're looking at a good drop there. Now the GPU power draw drops to a 112.5. So roughly a 12 watt drop on the GPU power. <clears throat> which is what translates into the lower temperatures and the lower fan speed and the voltages drop to 0.9875 volts but that's all groovy but how does that re report to the real world well in power draw we see that it dropped a load because the only voltages we changed were on the top end not the idle states the low power states so the idle stayed the same but on the top end we saw a 28 watt drop in total system load. Now this is with an i7 6800K, 32 gigs of DDR4, 2400 MHz on an Asus X99A2 motherboard with the RX 480. So that was a good drop. How about performance? Well performance on 3D Mark Firestrike actually went up a tick. Now it's still within margin of error so it's nothing to be like oh my god it got faster but it did perform better which shows that it's potentially more efficient at those voltages so it just runs better. Um, as far as Unigen Valley we did see a slight drop we're talking within margin of error from 49.8 FPS to 49.5. So the ultimate end goal here was to lower the power consumption and maintain the system speed and that's what we did there. So you this is should show you how to use the uh, Wattman utility to undervolt the um, the voltages there so that should be good should uh, you guys should try this if you've got an RX 480 because a lot of people are concerned about the power draw especially over the PCI Express slot and this should help alleviate a good bit of that 
Well, hopefully you got something out of this video today, and this has been Keith with WCCF Tech. If you found this video informative or enjoyed it, just hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe because we still do have the full review of this card coming. This did delay that review because I felt it was pertinent information to get out to the people who are buying this card. So we will catch you all in the next one, and have a good day.